answers prayer. Look. Again, I know it's got to be God, because again, everybody that doesn't speak in this church has spoke today, man, including my wife, said, don't you make me speak, don't you make me say nothing, get up there and say anything, and everybody's raising their hand to do this, God is stirring the waters in this place, and uh, I don't know, have y'all ever taken the time, I know, I know some of you have been here for a while, have, to look around and look at some of these flags that, that are in here, amen, and what they say on them, especially this one over here that says, shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before Him with joyful songs. Amen. And that plays into uh, to my message today. And uh, I tell you, with the weather change and stuff like that, I think it's real easy to get the blahs going on. When you have a day where it's, you know, 78 degrees one day, and you get outside and you, you say, Oh, man, I'm going to start cutting grass this week, get a little car work done. Uh, get a little spring cleaning done, and then the next day it's, you know, 32 degrees outside, you know, for, for a week. You know, it, it can just, I don't know if anybody else gets this way, but sometimes I'll just get sad for no reason. I don't know if it's the weather, I don't know if it's the enemy that comes against me, uh, but for whatever reason, sometimes we just, we, just, we just get sad, we get a little sullen, we get a little, little downtrodden, we get tired. You know, in our lives, and our ministry, we go through things, you know, especially when it's just been, you know, the routine. You know, the routine sometimes can just, can just drag you down. And that's why every now and then I, I like to break it up a little bit and, and switch things up in service, you know, to try to break the routine. But I was praying, Lord, what should I preach this week? What should I preach on? And he took me to the book of Philippians. I've heard it referred to as, as the book of joy. Uh, uh, before, and you know, I, I spent a little bit of time in it, and I said, "Well, Lord, this is prophetic. This is addresses some things in our in our congregation." Um, but you know me, I, I like to just go with the Word of God. You know, I like to let it preach for itself. I, I, I do a lot of scripture and things. So let, let's go ahead and get into this thing today. And before I do, I'd like to pray today, Father, in Jesus' name, give us eyes to see. Give us ears to hear today, Lord God. Break up the fallow ground of our heart, Lord, so we can receive the good seed of your word planted on good ground today, Lord. That you would take the coal, you would cleanse this pastor's lips today, Lord God. That you would set a watch at the door of my mouth that I could preach your word today with clarity, with power to get that seed in the ground, to get it watered. So, Lord, so that you can give the increase, I just pray that you would anoint me today to preach for a little while, Lord God, and have it come out the way that it needs to come out, touching the lives of the people that it needs to touch, that no one would leave today the same as when they came in. And Jesus, most importantly, that you would be glorified and magnified in all things. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, let's start right here at the beginning. Paul and Timotheus, the servants or slaves of Jesus Christ, to all the saints in Christ Jesus. That's everybody. Amen. He's not just talking to one or two. He said to all the saints that are in Christ, which are at Philippi with the bishops and deacons, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And I don't think that, that Paul just gives any kind of opening letter. Uh, he doesn't ever speak words just to be speaking them. Amen. He spoke grace and peace. And I tell you, if there's ever been a time, amen, that we need grace and peace in our lives, we need it now, Brother Bob. Amen. And I like that because I say the Bobs and they all just get included in that. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. I got them sitting here. One, two, three sitting here. Praise God. Amen. Gets them all in. You know, we, we need God's grace and we need his peace. What the devil does, he goes about as a roaring lion, Sister Pam, to seek whom he may devour. Amen. And the way he does that is through our media, through social media, always something trying to light a fire to get your focus off of God, off of the peace of God that he's trying to give you and get you worked up, make you hopeless. The world's coming to an end. You know, the sky is falling and all that kind of stuff. Well, praise God that we're ending, going into the last days. Amen. Because God is going to begin to anoint his people with a special anointing and a power the same way that they saw in the very beginning in the book of Acts. They talk about it as, as a latter rain, a pouring out. Amen. And it's in these times that if we don't have God's grace and peace, amen, we will be consumed. 
Amen. Like Sister Pam, like you talked about, you've been going through a lot. The enemy's been attacking you, even in a silly, like with your car and stuff like that. Amen. Just, just like they say, the, the devil's in the details, you know, trying to get into all that stuff. He wants to steal from you your grace and your peace and make you think that God is not poured out a measure of grace, a measure of faith, a measure of peace. A few weeks back, you know, going through some of this heart business, I, I don't know what all it was uh, that was going on, but I know I was being attacked by the enemy as well. And as I was sitting there and I was praying and I was crying out to God, I heard the Holy Spirit speak to me. He said, my peace I give you, my peace I leave you. And suddenly a calmness right in the midst of my storm. Just, I, I just had peace. My heart rate just started to go down. Amen. I felt the hand of God touch me. Amen. And sometimes that's what we got to do. We got to hang on in the midst of the battle and in the midst of that storm, Sister Cricket, and wait on the Lord. Amen. Our situation is not always going to be our situation. Our circumstance is not always going to be our circumstance. And who we are inside of that situation and circumstance is not always who we're going to be. Amen. You can be going through the worst time of your life and have a peace that passes all understanding come upon you. And when the rest of the world is falling apart, people are looking at you like you're crazy, Ryan. Like, why aren't you worked up like the rest of us? And my wife will tell you that because I used to get that way in the household about all kinds of stuff. Why isn't everybody else freaking out like I'm freaking out? Don't they see what this could happen and that consequence and this? And my wife said, you need to chill out, dude. <laughs> Amen. That's a prophetic word for the Lord. Chill out, dude. You need to calm down, Scott. Just calm yourself. What she says, you need to calm yourself, Kenneth. When she uses my first name, I know she means business. Just like Mama used to say, Kenneth Scott White, you get your butt in here. When she says, you need to calm yourself, Kenneth. Amen? Because sometimes I forget who the God of grace and peace is. I forget all the grace and the mercy that God has poured out on me. But sometimes it takes somebody to slow us down a little bit. Amen? And get refocused on, on, on what God is doing for us. Because He is a God of grace and mercy and peace. Amen? Amen. Praise God. All right. Paul goes on to say, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you all, making request with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. I'm beginning to learn from Paul as a pastor. You know, I've always been thankful for this congregation. We've been through some ups and downs just in the little nine months that I've been here. Amen. Had some, including myself, some other people in here go through some ups and downs. Amen. But I don't make requests. Sometimes God is heavy on my heart and I have a heaviness for people. But I don't probe, God, you know, the end is near. I just know this person's going down, Lord. I just, oh, Lord, you better help them. No. I come with joy. Amen. Knowing the God that I serve, I come with joy like, Lord, look what you've already done in this place. Look at the lives that you have touched and changed. Amen. Start from the bottom up. Start with the pastor on up. Amen. Touching lives and moving and changing and transforming us. Transforming not only our Sundays and how the messages preach to the order of service, to the worship and the music and things that are coming forth and the people that are speaking up that never spoke up before. Amen. That makes me full of joy. Amen. And it makes me want to continue to pray from a place of healing, restoration, and joy. Because I've shared that with you guys before, that God had to teach me, you know, before He could ever put me in a pulpit, that I had to preach from a place of healing and restoration and joy, and not from a place of brokenness and pain and desperation and despair. Amen. Because if not, that's all I'm going to bring to a congregation, and before I know it, I'll go from 20 back down to 2. Amen? It'll drive people out of the church. There's a reason God wants us to shout for joy to the Lord of all the earth, to worship the Lord with gladness, and to come before Him with joyful songs. Now, does that psalm over there, I, I don't see any footnotes on, that, on there that says, unless you're going through a bad time. Amen? Unless circumstance and situation is not as conducive or convenient for your life as it needs to be. Amen? Praise God. Paul said, being confident of this very thing, that he which has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ, even as it is meet or good for me to think this of you all, because 
I have you in my heart. Now I'm going to stop right there. Do we have each other in our heart? Or do we just look at who's in my way? I don't like this person's ministry. I don't like the way pastor sings those songs on his guitar. I'd rather have play along tracks. I don't get lyrics. I want lyrics, and I'm not being mean to you today, Bob. But anyway, uh, but do we have each other in our hearts? Amen? This is not a, it's not a spiritual competition with anybody. Amen? Nobody's better than anybody else. Praise God. If all we're worried about is who stepped on my toes this week or whatever else, we are in the wrong place, people, spiritually. Amen. When I think about y'all, when I pray for you, Sister Saint, I've got you in my heart with joy. Amen. That goes for all of you, everybody in here, in my heart with joy, no matter what the situation or circumstance is. Amen. Or not even no matter how you might think, how you might think I'm thinking about you or feeling about you. Amen. I've got you all in my heart, and it makes my heart full of joy. Amen? Even as good for me to think this of you all, because I have you on my heart, and as much as both in my bonds and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, you all are partakers of my grace. There's that word grace again. Amen? Grace and peace. Paul's trying to emphasize something here, because he knows the Philippians, they were going through a time of trial. They were being persecuted for Christ. Amen? He says, for God is my record, how greatly I long for you all in the bowels of Jesus Christ. And this I pray, listen to this, that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and all judgment. That word also means discernment. Amen. And why? So that you may approve things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense to the day of Jesus Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ, unto the glory and the praise of God. Amen. If our love is not abounding more and more, amen, what's going to happen? We're going to start to get that word right there, offense. How many times do we see that word? That's all that's been shoved down our throat these last few years in a liberal man. I'm offended. I'm offended by this. I'm offended by that. Amen. If you are walking in the joy of the Lord, Brother Bob, Sister Helen, it's hard to be offended. It's hard to be offended by anything when you've got joy going on. Amen. Brother Ed, it's hard to be offended by people and by things. People might do some hurtful things or, or do something silly, but they can't take your joy. Amen. You only become offended when you want to be offended. Amen. It's when you get off of that foundation of Jesus Christ and start dealing with stuff after your flesh. Yeah. Amen. Oh, well, this brother offended me. That sister offended me. This person did this. I don't get along with this sister. I don't get along with that brother. Well, I don't like how they came at me last week. I didn't like the tone of their voice. Amen. We all really ain't going to like me because a lot of times the tone of my voice sounds like I'm yelling or screaming or chewing somebody out. When I'm not, I'm fighting for you. Amen. And why? Because I love you. You guys bring joy to my heart. And I hope that I do the same thing, that when you think about your pastor, you think, hey, man, praise God, we got a good pastor. He loves us. He cares about us. Amen. He esteems other better than himself. Amen. And this is what's going to happen. We're going to be filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ unto the glory and praise of God. If you walk around offended all the time, mad at people, you're not going to bear any fruit. You're not going to give any glory and praise to God. You might put on a good act and come in and talk some scripture or whatever like that. Amen. But you're never going to bear those fruits of righteousness because really what's going on is you've got a root of bitterness that's growing down inside of you. Amen. And it's time to let those things go. It's time to get a hold of the joy of the Lord in your life. Amen. Paul says to stir up the gift that is within you by the laying on of hands. He's talking about the Holy Spirit. Amen. Your flesh might be miserable, Sister Cricket, some days, but you know just as well as anybody else, man, you start talking about Jesus, you start testifying about the good things that he's done, suddenly those, those pains and those, the, those achy joints and those situations and all that kind of stuff don't seem to matter anymore. Amen. Praise God. And we'll get to that. I don't want to get out ahead of myself here because Paul addresses some more of this in Scripture. According to the, my earnest expectation and my hope that in nothing 
I shall be ashamed, that with, but that with all boldness, as always so now, also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Amen. And I'm going to stop right there before I get to those last couple of verses. Amen. Praise God. He said, I'm not going to be ashamed. Nothing. I'll be ashamed with all boldness that whether by life or by death, Christ is going to be magnified in my body. He, Paul ran to the chopping block. It was recorded in history. Amen. That he ran to that chopping block with joy. Amen. He was ready to go home and, and be with the Lord. Amen. Whether you're going through a financial crisis, amen, you're going through a physical, a health crisis, amen, praise God. This is the attitude that I want to have, like what Paul had. Praise God that whether I, I, whether I live or die, if I fall over dead up here today, amen, I want Jesus Christ to be magnified in my body. I said this the other day, I don't want to go out like no sucker, crying and complaining, living for the devil, uh, just all oh, this is bad, that's bad, amen. I want Jesus Christ to be glorified in my life, in my body, in my family. Amen. I want to leave that lasting testimony, Brother Will, that will touch generations of my family to come. Amen. Not just my wife, not just my son and my daughters, but my grandchildren and maybe even my great-grandchildren if, if this earth, if Christ hasn't come back by then, Brother Ed. That is the testimony that I want to have that I did not give up. Amen. I did not give up, amen, just like when they took me out in, in, in the ambulance before, uh, you know, I, I'm preaching to the people in the ambulance, I'm telling the people in the hospital about Jesus, how good God has been to me, and they're looking at me like, what? How is your God good to you when you're sitting here with, with tubes and your heart's going and, you know, you might not be walking out of this place or whatever, it don't matter, whether by life or by death, Sister Barb, whether I live or die in this place, it don't matter. God's going to be glorified. Christ is going to be magnified in me today, Sister Jerry, through life or through death. Amen? It don't matter my situation or my circumstance. Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen? He does not change. Amen? And one of the things that we have to learn as Christians is to not change, not let a circumstance or a situation change who we are in Jesus Christ. If it does create a change, it should make us go deeper into the Lord, deeper into joy, deeper into thanksgiving, deeper into magnifying God and bringing songs. Because when the world is falling down around people, like it says in the book of Psalms, yea, though a thousand fall at, at, my, at, my, at my side, ten thousand at my right hand. Amen. We are living in a world that is falling apart right now. Amen. And we are seeing a lot of the body of Christ fall apart with it. Amen. The devil barks or he shouts and they're jumping. Oh! Running. Running home. Running to their TVs. Running to their, their alcohol, their drugs, their prescription medication. Oh, I just got to get away from that situation. But maybe if you turn around and faced it, Sister Connie, with boldness. Amen. Because I don't care what... What Fox News or CNN reported today, you ain't taking my joy. Amen. I serve the Lord of hosts, the God of armies. Amen. The earth is the Lord's in the fullness thereof. Amen. He can call somebody into judgment just like that. He can turn the situation around just like that. Amen. But God will let us go through something. Amen. Because God is always proving our character. He is always proving who we are. Amen. And I'm going to get a little bit into my, into my next week's sermon because what's happened in the body of Christ today, amen, is the body of Christ has mistaken talent for character. Amen. They have mistaken talent for character. Amen. Yep. We got people that are leading worship today that don't even know what God's Word says about homosexuality, about sin. I see Justin Bieber leading worship with Hillsong. He ain't got no business being up on that stage leading anybody in worship. He needs to be in the Bible somewhere on his knees repenting and asking for God to create the character of Jesus Christ in him. Amen. You look at Hillsong and Bethel today, there's scandals all over. Why? Because they brought these talented, charismatic speakers up there that totally lack the character of Jesus Christ. 
Amen. I'm glad that God never put me in this pulpit, never spoke that word to Sister Pat Reeves about me until God had created the character of Jesus Christ and Him crucified in me, knowing that when I get up here, I take this dead serious, Brother Ed. This is life or death to me. Because I know that one day I'm going to stand before a holy and a just God that is a consuming fire, and He's going to say, give an account for everything that you preached in that pulpit and everything that I didn't preach in that pulpit. Were you afraid of offending someone, Pastor? You didn't want to hurt somebody's feelings? You didn't want to hurt the tithes and offerings today? Amen? By saying what I told you to say? I will not walk out of here with anybody's blood on my hands. If somebody decides they don't want to be here anymore because of that, that's on them. But I guarantee from this pulpit I will preach what God gives me to preach, the way He gives it to preach it. Amen. Why? To exhort you, to edify you, to build you up. Amen. Yeah. To pull your feet from the fire. And if it's necessary to rebuke, reprove, and correct, you already know it's going to come from the Word of God. Amen. And it's going to be done because I love you. Like Paul said, he talked about that love. You are my joy. Amen. I love you people. I've gone through a lot since I've been here. Amen. And the Lord has taken me through a time of proving. Amen. He's broke me down to nothing since I've been here. Amen. A couple different times. And I've had to go before the throne of God and get real with God. Lord, take anything out of me that's not you. Anything inside of me that would hurt my congregation or not lead every last person in here into victory. That every last one of you on that day of judgment, when I'm standing, God's going to say, give an account for this one, give an account for this one. And this is what I hope to hear that he say to every last one of you, well done, enter in, thou good and faithful servant. Amen. You had a pastor that loves you. He didn't hold back. He preached the truth to you. Amen. And know this, every sermon that I get up here, don't think that God has not preached this to me first. Amen. That the Holy Spirit has not taken me over and paddled my backside a few times real good and says you're going to get it right. Amen. That's why I don't download four-part sermon series or preach other people's stuff. I preach what God has given to me, what He has taken me through. Amen. Because I know if He's working on my character and getting me right up here, amen, that that is going to flow over into the congregation, that the people that are here will get that same desire that God has given me. Lord, just burn me up. Anything that's not of you. When I think of that scripture, that, that uh, and I'm going to bring this up. When, when I think of that scripture, that our God is a consuming fire, amen, I want to run headlong into that thing. Burn me up. Anything that's not you, Lord, if there's wood, hay, and stubble in my life, burn it up. Because the only thing I want left is gold, silver, and precious stones. Amen. I want that crown. I want that crown of righteousness, not for myself, but that when I get to heaven, I got something to say. This is yours, Jesus. Let me throw this at your feet. This is never was mine. It was yours. Amen. All along. And that goes for each and every one of you. Amen. That you will have a crown of righteousness. You'll have that crown with those gold, silver, and precious stones that you too will be able to go before a living and a holy God and say, it never was mine, it's yours. Amen. Why? Because to live is Christ and to die is gain. Amen. Now, a couple years ago, I would not have felt that way. I was a little scared. I was a little terrified to go stand before a living God. Not today. I'm not afraid today that if God takes me now, amen, my hands are clean. Amen. Amen. Because I preached it and I taught it the way that God gave it to me. I didn't hold back on anybody or anything. Not in my family, not in this church, not to the, not to the leadership board or, or, or anybody or even our guests. Even to you today, Brother Ryan, you're, you're, you're the newest person in here. Amen. Praise God. And, and you're glad I'm not holding back, aren't you? Yeah. Amen. Amen. It's good stuff today, ain't it? Yeah. Praise God. Make you leave out of here wanting, wanting to be holy, wanting God to, to refine you, to be in that refiner's fire. But we got to get that, to live as Christ, to die as gain, and get rid of all that fear. Amen. Only let your conversation be as it becomes the gospel of Christ. 
that whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, that you stand fast, listen, that you stand fast in one spirit, one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. Amen? I hope there's no division in here. I hope we're all in the same place. See, I always used to quote this scripture, only let your conversation down to King James. That, that word conversation doesn't just mean your, your talk, what you say, but it's your lifestyle, it's your walk, amen? It's, it's your manner of life, your manner of living. But when I read it, because it does say the word conversation, I began to pray that. Lord, let my conversation, let everything I say, just let it become the gospel, amen? Don't let it be this trash talk and this talk of the world. Let everything I'm talking about relate to and become the gospel of Jesus Christ. Every conversation that I have from, from the person at the Walmart checkout line, amen, to the, to, to the ministry here, any place else, man, let it become the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let's be talking Jesus, 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 amen, whether they want to hear it or not. Let that become my conversation in this life, amen. But again, we got to be standing fast in one spirit, one mind striving together for the faith of the gospel and in nothing terrified by your adversaries, which is to them an evident token of perdition, but to you of salvation and that of God. Now listen to this. This might be contrary to what, what Joel Osteen and a few of these other guys preach. For it is unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake, having the same conflict which you saw in me and now here to be in me. What is that conflict? To live as Christ, to die as gain. Man, Lord, is, is it, if I leave this world, is to be present with God. Amen. Amen. But to be here is more needful for you. Amen. Paul basically said, look, I got a lot more work to do. I got a lot more fallow ground. I got to break up. I got a lot more gospel. I got to preach. I got a lot more lives. I got to touch. Amen. And that needs to be our attitude. That needs to be our desire. Yeah, I know I can get out of here at any time, that God could take my life and I'll be gone and that's to be present with the Lord. But what about that attitude that hang on God, give me a little more time because I want to get out, I want to preach the gospel a little bit more, I want to have an impact on somebody else's life, Lord. I want to do a little bit more good in this world because I'm tired of seeing what the devil is doing to this world and doing to these people in it. Amen. And if I'm not here to give somebody hope, Lord God, who's, who's going to tell them? Amen. That's the prayer I pray when I was in the hospital. Lord, I know if you take me, I know I'll be with you. But God, I still got a lot more to do with my family. My kids are crazy, Lord. They, they need me to be there for them, to preach a little bit more Jesus. Amen. To encourage them a little bit more. Amen. I want my grandson, once he can, once he can walk and talk and he can understand what, what people are saying to him, I want to preach the gospel to my grandson. Because if my son won't receive it from me, Maybe one day he'll receive it from his own child. His kid will be talking about, well, you know, Grandpa, you know what he said about Jesus? You know what he said about this, Mommy and Daddy? Amen. You never know how God is going to work and do that thing. Keep plowing, keep planning, keep moving forward, keep praying for people. Amen. If you don't know how to, how to speak words to people about the gospel, if you run into somebody, man, just pull over to say, God, I pray for that cashier. Lord, I could see she was hurting today. Lord, I don't know the right thing to say to her, but God, you will send somebody along. Lord, strengthen that person today. Amen. Touch their lives with Jesus. Get you some gospel tracks if you don't know what's in, and just leave little tracks laying someplace. You never know who might pick that stuff up. Amen. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels of mercies, Fulfill ye my joy, that you be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and one mind. See, he's coming up again. He just spoke that, all right, in, in the last chapter about being of the same mind, being in unity, talking the same things. Don't let there be any discord among you, okay? Don't, don't be hurt because somebody did something or said something. Amen. Being of one accord and one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, esteem others better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Amen. It means we just don't get wrapped up in ourselves all the time. It's always me, 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 my problem this, my problem that. God wants us to help other people. Amen. And you might find that by serving somebody else and helping them, it'll work your own problem out. It'll work your own situation out. 
in, in helping somebody else. Amen. Look, not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Now, now that can go both ways also, too. Sometimes you've got to let somebody help you. Amen. When he says esteem others better than themselves, I don't walk through this life thinking I got everything right. Think that I know everything. Ooh, they made me pastor. I got that title. Ooh, I got it now. Can't nobody tell me nothing. Amen. Amen. Ain't that right, Sister Carol? These ladies take me out and pray for me every Sunday morning. And I think they got plans to pray for me tomorrow night at 5 o'clock too. Amen. But they correct me on some things. Hey, watch your conversation, Pastor. You know, don't, don't speak doubt or disbelief. Don't, don't speak things like where your health is concerned. Even joking around. Amen. And I don't, if I ever, have I ever spoke back to you, Deborah, when you've ever said anything like that to me and said, well, sister, I appreciate what you're trying to do, but you just let me pastor the church and you all just go out there and henpeck in the hallway. <laughs> Amen. I've never done that, have I? No, I hope you never do. Nope, and I never will. Do you know why? Because, amen, because I esteem others better than myself. I'm not the only person in this church that, that has a, a gift. Amen? We've all received a gift from the Holy Spirit in one way or another. We've all been given some type of ministry in this place, man. And I'm never better than anybody else. I'm never so good that I can't receive correction, that I can't receive rebuke, reproof. Amen? But also, too, Myself, I've had to learn how to receive exhortation and encouragement. Because a lot of times when you've been so bitter and angry for so long, you just think everybody's just beating you down. Oh, here they come again to tear me up again. And even when it's an exhortation and encouragement, all, all they think is somebody's just beating them up when it's not true. Amen? So we've got to understand that esteem others better than ourselves, leave ourselves open to correction, humble ourselves in the sight of God so that we can be raised back up. Amen? Praise God. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. Now, if you guys remember, a few weeks back I started preaching out of the book of Revelation about some of the things to him that overcomes. Remember, you guys had on all the Bengals gear that day. Amen. And I use you guys as an example, the Liming family. Amen. It said, it being found a fashion as man, it said, God also has highly exalted him and given a name which is above every other name. Amen. We're going to get a new name in heaven that Jesus will announce. Jesus will announce. Amen. Now, how humbling is that? No, Lord, I just want to say your name. But Jesus says, no, if you humble yourself and you do these things, when you get to heaven, that's part of your reward. I'm going to announce you in heaven your new name. Praise God. It's a beautiful thing. God is so good. Amen. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father, Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. We don't hear a lot of that anymore today, do we, in the preaching that comes that's popular on TV? We don't hear about that fear and trembling part because people, judgment is coming. Amen? Just because you came to an altar and said a sinner's prayer and, and, and maybe cast off a little bit of uh, 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 of conviction, amen, and got yourself feeling better, we don't go back out and live the same way, do we, Sister Cricket? We go out with fear and trembling, amen, knowing that one day we're going to stand before a holy God, a God that gave His only begotten Son for us so that we are without excuse, amen. Even Christ Himself, God, manifested Himself in the flesh and allowed Himself to be hung on a cross for us so that we would be without excuse. Amen. Amen. Praise God. For it is God which worketh in you, both to will and do of His good pleasure. It's not our life, people. We're to be doing God's will, what God pleases in our life. Amen. Not to please man, but to please God. Amen. Do all things without murmurings and disputings, 
that you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom you shine as lights in the world. I tell you, if ever our nation was crooked and perverse, it is now. We've got perversion in the highest seats of the land right now. Amen. In our presidency, and our cabinet, we've got that people are just they're crooked as, as can be. They couldn't walk a straight line if you put it out in front of them. Amen. And some of them have been proven to be perverts as well. Disgusting. Amen. Men that can't identify if they're a man, if they're a woman, they don't even know that they've got gender dysphoria. Amen. It's not something to be celebrated. It's something to be rebuked because they have perverted God's word. Amen. Amen. That's why they despise us. That's why they hate us. That's why they're trying to get their agenda into schools. Amen. And, and, and create confusion in our young children. Amen. Because we live in a crooked and perverse nation. But God wants us to shine as lights in the world. And we cannot shine as lights in this world if we're bickering, we're arguing. Well, I didn't like what this person did. I don't like how pastor handled that situation. I don't like this person's tone of voice. You know, again, that whole type of thing all over again. We need to be working out our salvation with fear and trembling and shining as lights. Amen? Because a lot of that stuff we get upset and angry about the body of Christ is nothing. It's foolishness. It's stupid to get angry about it. Amen? We need to be focused on Jesus Christ and Him crucified and being a light in this world. Amen? But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ, yea, doubtless, and I count all things but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ and be found in Him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know Him and the power of His resurrection and the fellowship of His sufferings being made conformable unto death, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Do you hear that? That I may know Him, the power of His resurrection, and the fellowship of His suffering. People are not going to love you because you're preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ or you tell somebody, hey, you shouldn't live that way. That's contrary to God. That's an abomination. That's an affront to God. It's nasty and it's wrong. Amen. Now listen to what Paul said. This is for the once saved, always saved people that, you know, hey, I prayed this prayer. I'm good to go. I can live any old kind of way. Even Paul said, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth to those things which are before. I press on toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus for our conversation, our life, everything is in heaven from whence also we look for our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, now listen to this. This ought to get you psyched up right here. Who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things to himself. Amen? Amen. That is the promise of resurrection, people. That's why we are in this thing. So that when we die, we go down to the grave, we don't find ourselves in hell. Amen? But that we got a brand new body. One that's not susceptible to sin, sickness, disease, pain, AFib, uh, high cholesterol, whatever anybody else might be, a stroke, any of that kind of stuff, heart attacks, any of that type of stuff, dementia, none of that type of stuff. Amen? Perfect. Perfect. You hear that, Brother James? Amen? One day you are going to have a perfect body. Amen? Without Down syndrome. God has one waiting on you. Brother, and you are going to shout louder and sing longer and run faster than anybody up there. Amen. That is your promise. That is your hope. Jesus loves you. I can't wait till that day. Amen. I cannot wait till that day. But our conversation is in heaven. Amen. But Paul said he had to forget those things that are behind. Amen. We got to stop. We got to get rid of that church hurt and all that other kind of junk that we don't like. Forget about that stuff. It's a brand new day in Jesus Christ. Amen. Where you were yesterday is not where you were today. It's not where you're going to be tomorrow. Amen. Press on. Press on. Praise God. Amen. we got to be of the same mind in the Lord. Amen. We all need to be of that same mind that we're going to press on together. 
We're going to forget the hurts, the things of the past, and, and especially the mistakes of the past. Amen. Good Lord, I got so many behind me, I don't even want to look at it. You know, and, and we should learn from it. Move on. Don't live there. Don't live in the past. Learn from it and move on. And we're going to do that by being in the same mind of the Lord. See, we've got a vision. We've got a purpose in this place. Amen. It's not just to come together on Sunday, feel good, do a bunch of feel good songs. Amen. We've got a mission, not only in this church to build each other up, but we've got a mission down here at the Ohio Valley Manor. That's going to be bigger than anything we could have ever thought of down there. Amen. We're going to be reaching out and touching this community in ways that we never thought before. Praise God. Amen. Therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved, and longed for my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord. Now listen to this. I beseech Yodius, that's how you say it, and beseech Suntike. If you ever wondered how to say that name, I actually looked it up and looked up the phonetic spelling. Suntike is how you say it. I know it's spelled like syntax, but it's Suntike is how you say that name. These were two women, okay? Those are females that they're talking to, okay? And evidently... Uh, that they, they, they had they had some kind of argument, and the Lord they just couldn't seem to see eye to eye, amen. Maybe one of them didn't like the other one's tone of voice, or somebody uh, called them out on something that they were doing. I don't know what it was, amen. But Paul said, "I beseech, amen." And when you beseech somebody, that's not just hey, tell them to get it right. Paul has something in his heart, amen. I want you to be together. I want you to be in unity. You got to forget that garbage that's behind. Okay, let that stuff go, whatever it is. We got a ministry and we got a job to fulfill. Amen. For Jesus, that they be the same mind of the Lord. I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, help those women which labored with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and with my other fellow laborers whose names are in the book of life. Amen. Now we get to the good stuff. Rejoice. Amen. That's what God wants us to do. He wants us to be happy, He wants us to be joyful. Amen. In our situation, in our circumstance, in our church, in our fellowship, in everything that we do, He wants us to rejoice. Praise God. And here He is saying it. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, rejoice. That's right. Amen. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful or anxious, excuse me, for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known unto God. Remember how in the beginning of, of the book of Philippians, Paul said, I, I make my request with joy. Paul's telling you to do the same thing, with joy and thanksgiving. He was thankful. He was joyous for those people that he was praying for, even in the midst of the problems, even with uh, uh, Suntake and Yodius fighting and all that other kind of stuff. He was still rejoicing. He was still giving thanks. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Jesus. Amen. If you don't have peace right now and you're just anxious about stuff, number one, you're probably not praying about it. Number two, you probably got something against somebody else and you need to be praying for them. Amen. If, if you're hurt by somebody or whatever, start praying for that person. Make a request with joy for that person. Amen. Whether you like them or not, even if you know they're not living right, still make requests for them with joy. Amen. And quit being so anxious about stuff and start praying it. And God will give you peace, which passes all understanding. Again, how can you have peace in the midst of that storm? Amen. And he'll do that through Christ Jesus. Amen. About to wrap this thing up here. Got to one, two verses left. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Not all this other news media and this other junk and, and, and fights and all that division in the body of Christ. Think on those things. Honest things, just things, pure things, lovely things, good report, virtuous things, and praise. Amen. Those things which you have learned and received and heard and seen in me do. And the God of peace shall be with you. Why? Because I can do all things. Through